All right, welcome back. Today we've got a pretty cool project here. I managed to get my hand on an Anderson Hauser TMT142, which is a industrial temperature transmitter. It'll do RTDs, thermocouples. You can have both of them plugged in, and it'll send out a four to twenty milliamp signal. And we're going to. Uh, Try and get into this thing. It looks like the cover's been seized on. Whoever had it before probably put a pretty big pipe wrench on it to try and get it loose, but it looks like it hasn't come off. Looks pretty chewed up there, as you can see. But the body should be made out of aluminum, so we're just going to take a hacksaw to it and chop the cover off. So it looks like the screen came out relatively unscathed. There's a couple, couple parts right a little close with the hacksaw. But it looks like I just caught the plastic housing part a little bit. Nothing major. A couple of the pins there that are slightly bent. That one there too, but nothing too major. All right. Okay, here we go. So, pretty simple transmitter there. You got your screen pins there. Security. and failure mode so if you lose the RTD or the thermocouple if there's a break in the line or something it'll tell the transmitter to send out a high or a low signal based on this jumper here transmitter security is if this jumper is on then you can't connect to it with heart It doesn't say it's hurt. Yeah. You can't connect to it and you can't uh, configure anything on it. Basically locks it up and it's only running. That's it. And the display here, it's got a little top indicator right there so that you can orient the display however you want. It's like this transmitter can be oriented like that this any direction really and then you can set the pins inside of that based on how you want the display to look so if the transmitter is set up like this you can have the top face in that way seated in there and the display will be reading the right direction now to get into the back of it, it looks like there's two Phillips holding it in. Hope I can get my screwdriver in there because the uh, the remaining cover body is pretty thick in there. Let's see if I can get in there. Oh yeah. 
easy. happening is the screws that I just undid are too big they won't go past that body it won't let me pull this out to get a little creative with how I get this out now. In the meantime, I'll just screw these back down. Dremel out. Let's see if this will work. Got my safety glasses on. Throw this on high. And let's go. Okay, let's see what we got here. So here we've got the positive and negative terminals. We've got a ground. And we got what looks like thermocouple there, positive negative lead of thermocouple. And an RTD, which is basically just a resistor that changes its resistance based on temperature changes. And we've got, so if we have a two wire RTD, we're going to follow this one. So one and three. If we got a four or a three wire RTD, we're going to have this leg, that leg, and this leg. So two, three, and four. No, sorry. One, two, and three. If we got a four wire RTD, we're going to add this one on. So you have references on both sides. So we'll have one, two, three, and four. These will be your main legs. And then these will be your reference on your three or four wire RTD. Okay. Let's see if I can uh, get it to show us something. Okay, so I've got it wired up here. I don't have any red wire, so I'm using the same color codes as AC for my DC, where black is hot and white is not. And then on a thermocouple, red is always your negative. And if you remember with the picture before, I don't know if I can show you with this. Yeah, there we go. It asks for there we go. It asks for negative here on one terminal and positive on the two terminal. So we got that wired up now, and 
what a thermocouple is, is just two different metals twisted together, touching. And what they do is they create a voltage based on difference of temperature between the two dissimilar metals. And if you really want to look into it, it's called the Seebeck effect. And it's pretty interesting. Uh, a lot of your furnaces are run off thermal piles, which are basically just a whole bunch of thermocouples tied together. So with there being two different metals, you'll have different uh, resistances in the metals, which will cause there to be a difference in voltage at the end of it, because you won't have a perfect uh, dead short. And I'm really bad at explaining that kind of stuff, but if you want to look into it, it's called the Seebeck effect. Pretty cool. This is a K-type thermocouple. Let me look into that first. Sorry, yeah, it is a K-type thermocouple. Um, I don't know exactly what the uh, metals are. I believe one is nickel and one's nickel chromium. Um, I'll look into that again later. But, as you can see, it's wired up. And let's throw all the guts inside of it. And then turn it on and see what happens. We'll throw the transmitter part in. Put the display on. I'm going to have it sitting like this. So this is the top here. And so I can prop this up a little bit. Okay. Well, that looks promising. It turned on at least. Twenty two point seven degrees. It doesn't feel like that in here. Well, twenty two point five according to this. Yep. Now, does it change when I touch the end of this? It should go up. Oh yeah, look at that. You'll notice on the outside there, it's got a scale of 0 to 80 is lit up right now. I'm guessing that is percent scale. So it should be somewhere between 80 and 90% of its range. Hmm. means it should be spitting out somewhere between 17 to 19 milliamps ish. Okay here we got my meter set up in series with the 4 to 20 loop and I said that at about 80 percent it should be somewhere around 17 to 19 milliamps as you can see it dropped down about 70-ish. We're getting just under 16. So we are just under 75%. So if I touch this, there we go. Yeah. 
So if I hold on to this, it'll keep getting warmer. The milliamps keep climbing. I believe body temperature is somewhere around 32 Celsius. But that's internal body temperature, external is a little bit different. Somewhere around 31 and a half ish. Oh, look at that. Okay. And then if I let off, it should come back down. There is one more thing that we should be checking here, and that is the fail mode on it that I was talking about earlier. And that'll come about if this junction here opens or if I cut the wire. So, if I untwist this, for right now we have it set to go high, so we should get over 20 milliamps once I open this up. And there should be an error message showing up on here too. So, yeah, there we go. So that must mean that is their open circuit error code, and it's currently in an alarm state. And it's putting out more than 20 milliamps, which would generally be a fault. And then if I take this off and change this to low, Hmm. Doesn't do anything. I might have to cycle the power on this first. Let me take a look. Still going high. Says it's on low. Wonder if there's a software configuration that's overriding it. Hmm. I'll see if I can find something to uh, communicate with it later on.